What's up, y'all? This is DJ Kenny Parker, DJ and producer for Boogie Down Productions slash KRS-One, and today I'm back with another video. Now, today's topic comes from a question that somebody left in my comment section below pertaining to an old school rapper's comments about a pioneering West Coast hip hop group. They wanted to know what I thought about the group. I thought about it for a while, and then I thought to myself, I got a funny story about this group. Let me tell it to my people. So today's story is going to go under the category of epic fails when hip hop goes wrong. Now this particular story takes place in the summer of 1989. And it was between myself and my older brother, Chris, best known as the rapper, KRS-One. Now I've mentioned in several videos in the past that me and my brother are always arguing about hip hop. We've been arguing about hip hop since before hip hop was even on record. And the argument usually revolves around, I like a particular song or group and he thinks it's whack, or he likes a particular song or group and I think it's whack. So one day in late August of 1989, I came by my brother's house. I was still in school at the time, living in the dorms. I came by my brother's house to pick up a mixtape. Now, people out there may or may not know, Karis One is also a DJ. As a matter of fact, he has scratched on probably 80 to 85% of all of the BDP Karis One songs that's ever come out. So in the summer of 1989, I stopped by Chris's house to get me one of these mixtapes that he used to make. He used to rap on these tapes, freestyle. He used to give shout outs, cut up records. These tapes were dope. I wish I still had some, but unfortunately, I don't. Now, Chris had just come back off of tour when I met up with him. So I asked him, how was the tour? He said, yo, we just came back from Kansas City, Missouri. And there was a group out there that actually went on after BDP, which was kind of rare. And he said, I never heard of this group. He said, we went up there. We did the show. We killed the show. We rocked it. Everybody sung all the songs. Then he said, afterwards, as we was leaving the stage, this other group was coming on who I never heard of. He said, all the girls ran to the front. Chris said, when this group came out, they started cursing, cursing more than any rap group had ever cursed before. They were cursing at the girls and the girls were screaming. He said he couldn't believe it. He said they killed it. So when Chris got back home, he had to investigate and find out who this group was. He said the name of the group was N.W.A. Now keep in mind, y'all, N.W.A. had released their debut album, Straight Outta Compton, almost a year earlier. But this album had not made its way to New York yet, so they were not hot in New York City. I never heard of them, and my brother never heard of them. So anyway, he goes out and he buys the N.W.A. album, and he starts listening to it. So he tells me, yo, I got some of their songs on this mixtape. So immediately I'm like, you got some group named NWA on your mixtapes? Hmm, I don't know. So then he was like, yo, I was doing some investigating and the leader of the group is a guy named Easy e Now Easy e I heard of. He had a song called We Want Easy, which was playing all the time on the video shows. I actually liked the song. He had a part in the video where he jumped through the bars of a jail and landed on stage and started rapping. I used to like that part. I thought it was funny, but I didn't take Easy e seriously as an MC. I just thought it was like a novelty record. Actually, I saw Easy e perform at the Apollo in New York City a few months earlier. And as you guys may or may not know, the Apollo Theater in New York City is the hardest place in the world to perform. They actually encourage booing. Easy e performed at the Apollo, y'all. And let me just say, 
It did not go well. Easy e didn't even get to finish the song. So now Chris is telling me that this group led by Easy e who he saw in Kansas City, is on this mixtape. So needless to say, y'all, I was very skeptical. So I said, yo, you got the album? Let me see the album cover. So Chris goes, gets the album cover, and he shows it to me. And immediately, there was a problem. These guys had jerry curls. I was like, yo, Chris, they got jerry curls. Man, I ain't listening to no group with no dudes rapping that got no jerry curls. You crazy. He was like, yo, don't look at the jerry curls. Listen to the lyrics. Now, keep in mind, y'all, this is the same guy who said on the Criminal Minded song, keep my hair like this. Got no time for jerry curls. Attracting only women. Got no time for little girls. This same guy is telling me, don't look at the jerry curls. Listen to the lyrics. So I'm like, oh boy. So he goes, just take the tape, go home and listen to the tape and tell me what you think. So I took the tape, left his crib, went back to the dorms, popped it in my box and started listening. As I'm listening to the tape, songs are coming on one after the other, the tape is rocking. And then all of a sudden, this very aggressive beat comes on that I didn't recognize. And all of a sudden, this rapper comes on with one of the greatest opening introduction lines in the history of hip hop. Now in the comment section below, I want you guys, if you can, to tell me what you think is some of the greatest opening lines of all time. I think I came through the door, I said it before, is one of the great opening lines from Rakim. But this guy on this song says, straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube from the gang called Niggas With Attitudes. I'm like, who is this? Ice Cube from a gang? What, what is this? So I'm continuing to listen to the song, and this dude, Ice Cube, was rough, and he killed it. Then, the next MC jumps on, MC Ren, and he killed it. So by this time, I'm like, oh, okay, I see what Chris was talking about. But then, y'all, the last MC gets on, it was Easy e and he didn't sound anything like the guy who said, we want easy. Nah, he was on there cursing and talking mad reckless on the record. By the time the song ends, I was like, okay, I like this group and W. But wait, there were two more songs off the album on this mixtape. A little later on, a song comes on called Gangsta, gangsta, with a sample from BDP that says it's not about a salary, it's all about reality. Once again, this guy Ice Cube kills the record, and it was mad hard talking about the streets of LA. And once again, this guy Easy E comes on in the end talking mad reckless. So now I'm like, okay. N.W.A. is for real. But then, y'all, the third song comes on called F the Police, which is one of the most important songs in hip hop history. The police. By the time that song ended, I was an N.W.A. fan. About a week later, y'all, I had to go back to Chris's house. I walked through the door and he had this funny smirk on his face. And he goes, did you listen to the tape? I'm like, yeah, I listened to the tape. He goes, what did you think of NWA? I'm like, yo, NWA was dope. He was like, I told you. So based on the fact that I argued him down about not wanting to listen to NWA, and then went home 
and listened to it and became an NWA fan, I'm going to have to say for me, this was an Right after that, he goes, yo, I did some more research and there's another guy in the group that's dope too. So now I'm like, wait a minute, this group NWA has another guy that's dope? And Chris is co-signing this guy? He doesn't like anybody. So I'm like, okay, who is he? Chris goes, have you ever heard of the DOC? I'm like, yeah, I heard of the DOC. He had a video out with a song called Funky, Funky, Funky. Chris cuts me off. No, 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 not that. <laughs> so I'm like, what are you talking about then? He goes, have you ever heard the Diggy Diggy Doc? I'm like, the Diggy Diggy Doc? What's that? He's like, come in the music room. In Chris's crib, he had one room designated for music. He had about a thousand records in there, some pre-production equipment, turntables, a microphone. That's where he wrote a lot of his songs and did a lot of his production. And he had these two big 15 inch speakers sitting right there by your face. He pulls out the DOC album and he puts on a song called The DOC and the Doctor. If you guys are familiar with the song, it starts out a cappella. Yo, Dre, let's kick it on the one, Black, and we don't stop. So I'm listening to it. It sounds hype. The dude sounds aggressive. And then it goes, and I'm the diggy diggy doc, y'all. And when that beat dropped, I felt like my head got blown off of my shoulders. I was like, oh my. God, this is crazy. Once again, my older brother Chris is going, I told you. Then he goes, there's another song on here. And he plays me the formula. By this point, y'all, I was a complete NWA fan. I felt like getting on a plane and flying out to LA and just posting up hoping I could see one of them. I was all in. Needless to say, I went and listened to the whole NWA album. I listened to the whole DOC album. I listened to the whole EZE album. And I started saying to myself, who is this guy, Dr. Dre? He produced EZE and NWA and DOC? This guy is crazy on the beats. A little while later, y'all, I started getting into DJing, and at the same time, NWA released a 12-inch single called Express Yourself. And on this 12-inch single was a solo Ice Cube record called A, a Bitch is a, a bitch. bitch. Once again, this dude Ice Cube killed the record, and me and Chris used to play that record all the time. Fast forward to 1990, and we find out that Ice Cube has left NWA and is going solo. Ice Cube drops the album, America's Most Wanted, which in my opinion, doesn't get mentioned enough in the great albums of all time. Later on, we found out that Ice Cube was doing a show at the Apollo, and me and KRS-One were front row and watched Ice Cube tear the Apollo down. Keep in mind, this is the very same Apollo that I saw Eazy-E struggling a year earlier. I was also at the Apollo with my man Willie D from BDP when Ice Cube came with the Death Certificate album, when he had cut his hair bald and he popped off his hat and showed everybody in New York City that he didn't have jerry curls anymore and the crowd went crazy. I was there for that. I was there the following year when Ice Cube came to the Apollo and did Today Was A Good Day. And he practically didn't even sing the song. He just held the microphone out and New York City sung the whole record word for word. And I also loved Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg as well. I actually got to see Dr. Dre perform in New York City 
along with Snoop Dogg and Eminem in 2000. As a matter of fact, I still have the t-shirt from that concert. Eminem on one side, Dr. Dre 2000 on the other side. I still got the shirt, y'all. This shirt is 23 years old. So to answer the question that the guy left in my comment section, I think NWA is an incredible group, super dope. And not only were they incredible as a unit, but they were incredible individually. So I have nothing but love and respect for NWA and shout out to them for making the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So that's my story, y'all. If you guys like the story, please give me a like and a thumbs up. And if you don't have the book, get the book. My brother's name is Kenny. It's the true origin story of BDP. I have a lot of classic hip hop stories in there. And until next time,